to announce the release of our new recording of Bach's B minor Mass. We recorded it live in the opening concerts of our last season, just over a year ago. Uh, so the recording features are brilliant chorus and orchestra and four fabulous soloists, all Bach specialists, Julia Van Doren soprano, Christina Schabo mezzo, the tenor was uh, Jonas Hacker and the bass Tyler Duncan. Now this slightly enigmatic work is truly a mountain in our repertoire in Baroque music. Every time we take a breath to, to sing that opening chord, that B minor chord, I, I sort of feel we're stepping on the foothills of Everest. It is completely huge and we have such a long way to go. Um, I said enigmatic because, well, you know, it's not really in B minor and it's not really a mass. Uh, it's actually mainly in D major. Most of this piece is in D major, the brilliant key of D major, but it opens in B minor because it's the relative key and a couple of other movements are also in B minor, but that's all right. It's not, I say it's not really a mass because he wrote it in bits uh, and not in the same order, not in the right order and, and over several decades. The Sanctus actually, the mighty Sanctus was written first in 1724. The, Kyrie and Gloria, he, he wrote together in 1733. And in the last two or three years of his life, he clearly thought about putting those together with other mass movements. And he wrote the Credo, uh, the uh, Hosanna, Benedictus, Agnus Dei, Dona Nobis Pacem. And clearly he was thinking of putting them together and performing the piece as a whole. Uh, but it never happened in his lifetime. He died in 1750 without having heard that um, whole piece. Nevertheless, it has an immense unity and logical unity to it, despite having been composed piecemeal. And it is absolutely one of the greatest pieces of our repertory. And I would actually say one of the greatest pieces in all music. So here's a little preview for you. Uh, we've chosen two or three things to play. It's actually very difficult to choose small bits of the vast work, but we've done our best. And here are some choice excerpts. I think possibly in any mass setting, the most crucial part of it is both musically and of course liturgically, is the description in the credo of the crucifixion and the resurrection, uh, truly the heart of Christian belief. Now the setting of the crucifixus here in the B minor mass, he actually took this, um, based it on a transcription of an earlier cantata of his, number 12, Weinen, Klagen, Zorgen, Zagen. It's completely extraordinary of searing dissonance over a um, a sort of relentlessly traveling baseline of dark inevitability. And the choir descends at the end into the hushed horror of the crucifixion itself. At which point the triumph and thrill of the resurrection burst out with blazing trumpets and the most exuberant counterpoint.
I said we'd recorded these live in performances a year ago, um, which of course is how many of us operate these days for recordings when we do operate. Uh, and it's quite hazardous really, because of course there are much fewer opportunities to deliver the sort of perfection that we constantly aim for. Um, and when little things happen in live performance, we try and correct them on the second one and so on. And we also have to, as always in live performance, we have to harbour our stamina, and especially in a piece as big as this. Uh, the structure of it actually means that the pace and the intensity, especially for the chorus, actually increase towards the end. So everybody, in particular the singers, have to, have to pace themselves into what they give at any time. Uh, and then, of course, in live performance, <laughs> one has to factor in that an audience is there. Uh, and so people cough or drop their programs or there are extraneous noises and we have to work with those or edit them out or so on. So there are hazards of doing live performance. On the other hand, I think there are huge advantages too, because you you do absolutely get the sort of the, the sweep of structure, which is what we aim for. It's not obviously, well, we'll do that bit now, and now we'll do that bit, and then we'll do that, go back and do that bit. You do actually get the, um, the, the, the line and the journey of the performance. And also, I think that real sense of communication to and with and for an audience that is actually sitting there. So, Let's, let's play you another bit. The, the Sanctus, which I often think is just one, the sort of greatest part of this great mass. It's certainly the beginning of the relentless fire sequence for the chorus that I talked about. And yet 
it is so rewarding to sing and so rewarding to play. We get this huge textured magnificence and the boldest of statements, which eventually leads into a plenty sunt or chaley of dance-like delicacy, which builds up and up and up ingeniously to its own mighty conclusion. <laughs>
recording of the B minor Mass is the first of four that we've planned of the four big Bach choral works. So after this, we hope to do the St. Matthew Passion, the St. John Passion, and the Christmas Oratorio. Now we planned this, we've been planning this for some time as part of the commemoration of our 50th anniversary, which of course is what we should be celebrating now. But uh, while COVID has certainly put a spanner in our works and delayed our plans along with those of everyone else, we are deeply committed to this huge project of which the B minor mass is the first recording. So the St. Matthew Passion will be next. We planned it for next spring. It's going to be delayed probably till the one after that. But whenever we do it, we will record it and we hope you will be there. So back to the B minor mass, let's conclude with its own conclusion, the extraordinary uh, Donna Nobis Partem. Now, the, musically, this is actually a repeat of the Gratias Agimus Tibi section of the Gloria. Yet, although the notes are identical, it is not at all the same. In the Gratias, we were giving something. We give thanks to the O Lord. Here in the Dona Nobis Pacem, we are asking for something. Give us peace. And they have a completely different feel about them. So, as Bach prays for peace, we begin with the, the quiet reverential hush, which builds and builds in that unbelievable Bachian way of texture and dynamic, just increasing and intensifying and traveling to this brilliant and exuberant conclusion. <laughs> 